Good morning. Welcome to Water, a National Crisis. Uh, this is a panel presented by those of us here in the Gaylord College. My name is Peter Gade, and I'm the journalism area head at the Gaylord College here, and, and we're here today to discuss water, a source of life, environmental sustainability, and increasing scarcity here in Oklahoma and much of the nation, which faces a severe and ongoing drought. Today, we're fortunate to have a very special group of experts to talk about this issue. Before we begin, I want to note that this panel is part of the Gaylord College's celebration of our 100th anniversary as a journalism program here at the University of Oklahoma. It's the second of two panels that the college has hosted to bring greater awareness to the problems caused by this extended drought. Yesterday, we held a similar panel at the National Tornado Conference in Oklahoma City. Today's panel is being streamed live to reporters and editors across the nation who cover environmental issues. Further, in recognition of our Gaylord Centennial, journalism students from this college are spreading across the state and region in a special reporting project to tell stories about the drought. These in-depth and enterprising stories will be published over the next six weeks or so on our student magazine website, roots, R-O-U-T-E-S dot O-U dot E-D-U, and on Twitter at hashtag water crisis. For those of you who are following online today, you may send questions to our panelists at, on Twitter at hashtag water crisis. Before we begin, we want to show you an example of our students' work. Uh, this is John Haverfield's story. If you look around, it's easy to tell that we are in an extreme drought here in Oklahoma. Every single one of our lakes have below normal water levels. This lack of rain is something some residents haven't seen in a very long time. In my pond has stayed lower the last five years than it has over 30. This year was the first year in the 30 years I've been there that I was worried about having enough water for cattle. We all need water to survive, and recently here in the Plains, the rainfall just hasn't been enough to fully satisfy our demands. In Oklahoma, we all know the weather can change in an instant, but for the last five years, Oklahoma City has seen below normal annual precipitation. And in southwest Oklahoma, this lack of precip has caused them to experience D4, the highest rating given on the U.S. drought monitor. Here at Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City, the water level is so low, it's hard just to get a boat on the lake. In fact, where I'm standing right now, the water level should be well above my head in normal conditions. Why is this drought happening? Well, we talked to climatologist Gary McManus to tell us why. Well, really what we've seen is the, the, uh, over the last two years is just that uh, a jet stream that controls our weather. It sort of steers where the weather goes. It's been shed far, the, far to the north uh, quite a bit. So normally we would see storm systems come through, you know, once every couple of weeks and we would get some good rainfalls in the springtime and the rest of the year as well. But those have been, have been largely absent. And when we do get storm systems, they come through so fast we don't get the, the moisture we need from the Gulf of Mexico to fuel those, those rainfall events. So, you know, it's just sort of been a, a continuous, persistent pattern. We know the drought is serious currently, but what can we forecast for the future? Could there be any relief in sight? Well, we talked to KWTV meteorologist Gary England, someone who has been forecasting weather in Oklahoma for over 40 years. I think the Oklahoma drought of now and in recent years has been very significant, very close to the worst in many areas as far as precipitation amounts. And uh, who, who knows when it's going to end for sure. But if you look at the, the lack of rainfall and the extended periods, but there's always you know, a drought in Oklahoma somewhere sometime. But this one has been very large. It's gradually spread like the 30s drought did to the northern plains and places on to the east. So I think it's, it's a tough go. Uh, I think that, uh, it, you know, I've been around a long time. I wasn't, I, I don't remember the 30s, but, you know, the 30s, when you look at that, what happened there, it was, it was extremely dry, the winds were strong, and the farming practices were terrible. And so all those problems. The time we got the 50s drought, which was horrendous, and I remember that one, is that they had built uh, tree lines to stop the erosion, they started terrace farming, and that helped a lot. And now that we have all these good farming practices and all these things, we just don't have the water. 
and uh, I maintain it probably comes in cycles. You know, we have droughts, and then we have very wet periods, and we have droughts, and we have very wet periods. Is there something behind these cycles? Could climate change really play a role in the current drought situation? Well, the climate change that we are seeing across the globe, it's, it's hard to say whether that's playing a huge impact on this or just a small impact or, you know, just a nominal effect. It, it's something that the researchers will have to continue to look at. Now, we've seen these types of patterns in our past, so we know that they exist anyway, whether the, the climate change or the warming of the globe that we're seeing, whether that's having an impact on those natural variations. Uh, again, that's something that the researchers will have to find out. It's fascinating. You know, it's what I like about weather is that nobody really knows for sure whether it's a forecast or what. There are a lot of theories, but when you ask the people, okay, prove it to me. Prove to me that X causes Y. And that's when the problems come up. So it's a fun, fun business to be in. No matter what happens in the future, the thirst for water will never cease. But the supply may be dwindling down at a harsh rate. And for the last several years, people have said, I need rain, rain, rain. Then I get an email and say, look, I'm selling off half my herd. They're, they don't have the water for the cattle. And it's a real problem, and it's going, I think it's going to continue to exist off and on. I think it's a very serious threat. We may not know when that big rain will come to relieve the drought, but by being proactive and conserving, we can help ensure the abundance of that most valued liquid. Thank you, John, for that good report. Um, as you can see, the nation hasn't been this dry in more than a half century. The drought continues. It'll have further catastrophic consequences for much of the nation. Our panel today will look at this issue from several perspectives, and we're fortunate to have two leading scientists who study climate and weather and a top science and environmental reporter from the Associated Press. I'd like to introduce you to them before they begin. Uh, first, we'll have Deke Arndt, will be attending today by Skype from Asheville, North Carolina. Deke is chief of the climate monitoring branch of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's National Climatic Data Center. The climate monitoring branch of, is responsible for tracking and assessing the state of the Earth's climate system. He's an applied climatologist and his work encompasses research and service that are focused on helping people make better climate and weather sensitive decisions. His most prominent work has been in the drought monitoring community. He was one of the lead editors on the 2009 through 2011 editions of State of the Climate. And he's a University of Oklahoma alum and he holds his bachelor's and master's from this institution in meteorology. Dr. Baxter View, who's sitting in the middle chair, is the College of, Engineering's Civil Engin College of Engineering, Civil Engineering and Environmental Sciences, Joseph A. Brandt Professor. His technical areas are civil engineering, environmental engineering, and hydrology, which is the focus of much of his research. Dr. View has authored more than 110 articles on hydrology. Since 2010, he has served on the board of directors of the Central Oklahoma Master Conservancy, Conservancy District for Lake Thunderbird and on committees organized by the Oklahoma Water Resources Board. And furthest to the left on the stage is Seth Bornstein, who's the national science reporter and writer for the Associated Press, the world's largest news organization. He covers issues ranging from climate change to astronomy. He's a winner of numerous journalism and awards including the National Journalism Award for Environmental Reporting in 2007 from Scripps Foundation. He's a two-time winner of the Outstanding Beat Reporting Award from the Society of Environmental Journalists. He's part of a team whose 2004 coverage of the Columbia Space Shell disaster was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize. He's been a science and environmental journalist for about 20 years, working for Knight Ritter newspapers in their Washington bureau the Orlando, Florida Sentinel, and the Fort Lauderdale Sun Sentinel. I ask you to please welcome me in our in applauding our panel. Thank you. Uh, Deke Arndt has spent his life studying clim climate data. He probably knows as much as anyone in the country about our changing climate, and he can talk to us about the conditions of the drought and how they might extend to being a new normal. Thank you.
You're, you're muted. Got it. Okay, got you now. All right. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, it's nice to be back in Norman, even if it's only virtually. And um, and I shared an office with Gary McManus for ten years, so it was good to hear his voice um, as well on on that uh, on that nice piece. Um, so I'm going to talk really quickly about drought and climate, and. Uh,